Hey, this is Not Sir, and we're talking about Untitled this week. Things I would like to talk about. I would like to discuss the British Light Cruiser line. It is coming. The British are coming. And uh, at some point, I'm going to have to go dark where I can't discuss it because I have access to it and the NDA is now in effect, right? But I don't have access to it. Some super testers do have access to it and you might have run into them. So I'm just, I'm just looking into it, discussing it, excited for it. Excited? You're, you're an American. You shouldn't care. What is wrong with you? Of course I care. It's super exciting. I don't understand why people get that impression. I love every single ship line. It has strength, weaknesses. I'm not someone who's anti-paper, anti-history, or anti-not-my-country thing. I love it all. Other things, let's talk about 511. Did it come out? And was it appropriate for you? Have you tried those new maps? Have you tried those new game modes? What, what do you think, right? I'll try to answer some questions that were asked of me in my stream, in my chat itself, in the Twitch chat, in the comments, also for YouTube. So we'll, we'll do all that. And yeah, hopefully it's fun. This is the Bismarck, and it's on the map Land of Fire pre-0.5.11. The Land of Fire in 5.11 has slightly altered the island location. So it's important that you, you recognize that. It, it's very obviously not 5.11 Land of Fire. Well, let's get to the first topic that is, of course, always interesting. The British Cruiser Line. Now, we know they, the British are coming, right? The British are coming. I can write the script for them right now. The British are coming on the North American wiki or whatever the, the, the uh, website. Some of you might have run up against or have seen a British light cruiser. Please, please understand they are not allowed to talk about it. They cannot describe in detail anything. They can say generic words like, uh, oh, it's fun, it's challenging, or I've got to play it more. They can't tell you the concealment factor, the torpedo ranges, uh, the rate of fire of the guns. They just can't tell you any of that. So please be respectful. Please be kind to them. It is important that you understand they want nothing more than to tell you. But if they tell you, and there's visual proof, which is in the form of a screenshot, and they get reported, they could potentially risk losing access to future content. You don't want that to happen. You want as many people as is humanly possible to get their hands on this stuff, give input. You don't want to drive people away who like this stuff. So just just be excited to see it. Now, I've, I've seen people in the stream, and I'm sure in the YouTube comments I've also read, have you played the Belfast? What do you think? I have not played it. If I have, I cannot tell you that I have. It's sort of an NDA issue, but I do know that Belfast is a premium cruiser that is coming out when the line comes out. Now, the last ship that was released like this is the Jeanhost. And that ship is ridiculously strong, in my opinion. The reason it is strong is not because, oh, it just is vastly superior to everything else. It's not. It's honestly just a Gneisenau now with a slightly different gun caliber. What makes it so strong is that it's a premium tier 7. And it is a very, very easy tier 7 to control, to command, to consistently reach damage that would reward you with enough credits to support any form of enjoyment, right? Is the Belfast gonna fulfill that expectation? Honestly, I think the cruiser line is going to be difficult to use. It's, it's gonna be one of those, uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? You fire HE in pretty much every scenario. The velocity of the shell is gonna be better than probably the Americans, but worse than pretty much everything else in the cruiser line. That's not really good, right? It, it could be pretty bad. It could be American light cruiser bad, Cleveland, Atlanta, Flint. You got to add a lot of lead, but 
what we do know about these is they're really good against destroyers and they're really good against battleships. There's nothing wrong with being good against either one of those because I've read and seen Europeans, Asian, Russian. How do you have so many cruisers? All our games are dominated by battleships or destroyers. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's a little bit more balanced, even though I think you should probably have maybe two battleships, eight cruisers, and two to four destroyers somewhere in that realm. That's, that's sort of what I'm feeling on the balance of how the game should almost would ultimately be, right? That's not going to happen. Battleships have always been iconic. They've always been romanticized. Even though, quite frankly, they have never lived up to the threat, the iconic expectation that not only Americans, British, Japanese, Germans, they just don't live up. It's too much invested in a single entity, and in real combat, it ends up being, well, you know what? It would be better if we had all this crewmen, all this steel, all this effort put in place to multiple ships or other forms of naval power to really succeed right but i don't care it's fun it's cool it is great it is great to see them the british will obviously be excited for their own ships i i i suspect that uh the germans are very happy to see the german battleship line but the british will be extremely ecstatic when they have their hands on the cruiser line. I think it will be absolutely cruiser lines galore. And how would I counter a light cruiser line? Well, I would I would counter it with accurate battleships. I would try to be careful if I was a destroyer. I think I think the British line is going to be very challenging at first for the destroyer line. And that that will be fun, right? As long as radar isn't uh, standard. Radar, for anyone who doesn't know, 511 introduced a huge buff to radar. Absolutely massive. It went premium, no joke. Premium radar, I believe, was five or six minutes by default. It's now two minutes. It has a two minute cooldown. It is amazing how much of a buff they gave Radar, and quite honestly, I don't like it. I think it was too much. I think that Smoke should not have to compete one-to-one -one with the buff that they gave to Radar System. I actually was in a game, and it was going up against a Baltimore, and the Baltimore had me spotted for most of my engagement. I had to pull back. By the time I could get back into position... To use torpedoes or my main guns and pop smoke it was up again and my smoke was basically on the exact same cooldown to me radar should be useful but it shouldn't be better than smoke it shouldn't be a one-to-one -one counter with smoke because smoke is not the be-all end-all right smoke doesn't win you the game scouting wins you the game if someone decides to stay in smoke they cannot scout for their team. They need someone else to scout for them. Whereas with Radar, Radar really gives you an advantage pretty much all the time. There's no disadvantage to Radar. The only disadvantage is the cooldown and the duration of Radar. For the Soviets, it's very short, but it is very long range. You could potentially kill a target if everyone was focusing at the right moment. However, that's, that's usually not what happens. What usually happens is that Radar is something that makes a destroyer panic and then they, they're moving off and they're trying to avoid contact or they're taking contact and they put themselves in a position where now they really are going to take damage because they are not in their smoke anymore. They might have taken enough to cause a fire, cause steering or what have you. It's really good for rooting out the destroyers and being around destroyers. And it's not the only thing that's good. Hydroacoustic is really good too if you need to go up against a destroyer. So I don't understand the logic behind the massive buff that they gave Radar. 
I think it has to do with the British cruise line. I think they are indeed getting smoke or something equivalent. They will be encouraged to hide and fire. They will do massive damage, but they will be a glass cannon. They will be exactly or something similar to an Atlanta. It's going to have absolutely devastating HE damage, huge rate of fire, small caliber. It's not really going to be very effective with AP, except in very specific scenarios where you can have a, a perfect broadside, a very flat armored projectile target, you know. But uh, I, I think the radar buff is a little bit too much. I think it's just maybe a touch too much. Maybe, maybe, maybe nerf it by 60 seconds. Maybe make radar three minutes, smoke two minutes on average, and obviously the the other option would be the non-premium, which would be three minutes or four minutes, right? I think that would be fair. I think it might, uh, if if it if it isn't working like that, then maybe they need to consider giving the smoke of destroyers something unique about it, if they're going to place it on a light cruiser line. We just need to see. We just need to see what happens. Obviously, Wargaming has basically the entire deck in front of them. They know exactly what they're going to do. This is in response to a million different things that we can't see in the background. Maybe they're absolutely correct and I'm completely wrong. But right now, Radar feels really strong against my playstyle, which is playing destroyers that are fairly close to the opponent, you know, within 10 kilometers of ships it, it's uh, it's really really punishing and it only comes online late in the game it, it's not something that slightly gets better it's immediately really effective at tier 7 definitely tier 8 9 and 10 so what else well people have been talking about the Leningrad I have not seen the Leningrad I am excited for the Leningrad. I'm excited for a lot of things, obviously. Hopefully you are too. It's a it's a privilege to play this stuff and to talk to you on stream. I really enjoy it. We are applying for partnership again. If we get partnership, it will be much better for anyone who's having trouble watching the stream. Maybe the kilobits per second is just too high for you. I have it set pretty low for a, a stream. So I, I can't really go any lower and maintain the quality that I expect. I would love to go higher, but I just can't, obviously, because scaling isn't universal yet. So 5.11 went out. It had a couple changes, a couple map changes. It allowed the armor preview. Pre 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 it allowed the armor preview. And I'm going to keep that in just for funsies, okay? I, I just, you know, just enjoy it, okay? Whenever I do takes and stuff, obviously, I, I need to make sure I say it correctly, clear. But the armor preview system is great. It's a great addition. It should really have some sort of angle equivalent, the equivalent armor penetration required to go through and stuff, where to aim. I think that would be the icing on the cake, but it's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's way better than they've ever done. They've never done this before. They've had games with armor and angling and all that stuff that's really important they've never actually had an in-game armored detailed preview system and it just blows my mind surely and stop calling me surely surely it's not that hard to apply the hitbox and information into some elegant 3d model that depicts exactly what the player is about to do right just i don't understand why they haven't done this more but i'm happy they don't what about the map changes well i've played land of fire once i've played epicenter two or three times i was not impressed with epicenter granted i did appreciate that everyone was basically in the same area and fighting i just wish it felt like there was a little bit more back and forth for objective control it feels like it's completely unobtainable until most of the enemy is taken out or the enemy destroyers are still alive or yours are still alive that's my problem with epicenter as far as the maps go i enjoyed them even without the changes i still like the changes you know there's nothing that took it away i enjoy the game i enjoy destroyers i don't complain about things i can perceive threats before they actually occur because i've played it for for a really long time at this point 
So just let me know. What do you think of the patch? Did it come out the way you wanted? Are you excited for the British? I certainly am. I will share as much information as I can as soon as I can. The stream is going well. Next stream is Wednesday. Hopefully we are partner by then. I will check it, obviously. No hopes, right? I appreciate the enthusiasm. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.